crushing the meta. Hey, hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hopefully you're having a great day today. It's your boy JJ again with Team Crushing the Meta. We have a very special guest today. Somebody with a good baritone voice, ready. <laughs> ready for you, <laughs> ready to lay it on you, nice and thick. We're here with uh, Minir, Solemn himself. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Magzim, or otherwise known as Solemn Vanguard, I guess. <laughs> I'm a Vanguard player, a YouTuber, mm -hmm. uh, business owner, I guess. I guess I can add a bunch of titles, but it's really pointless. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, but Max, thank you for taking out your time out, your busy schedule. I mean, you have other stuff. Thanks for having me. Of course, you got other stuff that you want to do. Uh, but first thing first, Solemn. Maxim Solemn. Solemn, out of everything, out of all convention names. How did how did that come about? What what made you decide of wanting to do a YouTube channel, oh, Card by uh, Banger? Mm-hmm. Um, so do you want me to go over the name first or over the channel itself? Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> yeah. So name-wise is actually a very awful story. Essentially, Ooh. I wanted to start a music project and I needed a name. Mm. And so I was like, well, what's a really cool name? And I had this Yu-Gi-Oh card, Solemn Judgment. And so I called the music project Solemn Judgment. And then from there, at one point, I was like, it makes no sense that it's called Solemn Judgment. Because first of all, maybe it's copyrighted. But secondly, I'm one guy. So why wouldn't I like have a person's name? And so then I just put my first name, Maxime, and added Solemn to it. And so that evolved. And then eventually I was like, well, I have a cool deck, like my Tavas deck, and I wanted to show it off. So I made a YouTube channel, Solemn Vanguard. I don't know why. I guess I just wanted to keep the Solemn branding going, I guess. And so it, it just grew from there. All right, that's actually pretty sick. And like in terms of music, because like I just did a, a interview with uh, Eric or a couple a couple mm -hmm. hours ago, talking a little bit also about music as well. Um, we talked about you know him doing that and also combining it with other projects he's done with Van Vanguard and stuff like that. What mm -hmm. made you want to do that for yourself? What made you want to put music as your forefront and then Vanguard is sort of your secondary thing? So. To me, I think I'm just going to be the guy with all the bad stories. On here. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, for music, mm -hmm. I was really into metalcore, which is like just a bunch of screaming. And um, a guy in my class, I don't think my class, but my school was like, yeah, I can look into people's eyes and I can see if they're, they're they got what it takes to be musicians, to be artists. And I mean, I was I was 14 or something, and he and he said like, "Nah, you don't have it." And I'm like, "Bitch, I'll show you." <laughs> <laughs> so like a few weeks after, I bought my uh, my first guitar for like 50 bucks used, and the rest is history. So like, I don't have a fancy. Oh, it's always been my dream. It was literally like one guy and me being stubborn. And of course, I love music a lot. Then like, it it has brought me a lot, and I love doing it. Like it's amazing, but. The very first shimmer, <laughs> that little fire, was literally just being a stubborn ass. And then Vanguard, um, I don't think they flew from each other in any way. Like, I started playing Vanguard by being at an anime convention, actually. And I picked up the Revenger trial deck. And I, I was an edgy guy, so I wanted to the edgy deck, I guess. And I don't know, I, I've just... I, I took one break around legion and then in g i came back and i just haven't stopped playing since jeez i mean all right that's actually pretty sick but have you ever like thought of making any, like music or music videos for vanguard inspired content or do you just... uh yes actually like i i i'm gonna share it i guess right now Ooh. because whatever but so i started this cover mm -hmm. of the first vanguard opening and I started contacting like a bunch of people to be on it. But the issue is I'm still waiting on like 80 people's recordings. <laughs> Not 80, but like I, I I contacted a few and I still have to contact some. And I don't know, by having to wait on so many people after a while, it, it just laid dormant. And so the whole cover is ready. Like a few content creators tracks are ready. And I'm literally here like, 
do I contact like 10 more people and do I bug like 10 other people for their recordings and now it's just sitting there and like I kind of want to finish it because it was really cool like the idea was oh we have all these amazing creators and oh you should also be part of it by the way can you sing but <laughs> <laughs> but but so uh, we, we have all these creators and it would be cool to like come together over something it was also like start of covid that it actually started so, uh, you know, it's been a while yeah and yeah i mean it's cool but it just never got finished so far so i probably should all right all right but in terms of content creators that you've been in contact with has there been any like a couple content creators that like, really stood out to you that you really like just kind of vibing with chilling out with and talking to do you mean musically or just in general i mean both why not both um i don't know i i know eric is like a, a big music guy vanguard mm -hmm. insider so so we had we had a little talks there um yellow card mm -hmm. also play, plays guitar he's also a bit edgy like me <laughs> okay uh, so we, we like edgy edgy guitars <laughs> but but beyond that it's like general vibes i like a lot of people right. um yeah I, I don't think i have bad blood with anyone mm -hmm. maybe I, maybe i do without knowing <laughs> but as far as I'm aware, everything's cool. I, I don't know. Alright, okay, okay, okay. But in terms of like also working with um, other content creators, I mean, of course, just harping on that again, I guess, um, that you've been working as one of the team members of WCC. Yes. How did you guys get in contact with each other? How did you even end up joining that team? I um, know you've joined Worlds and stuff like that, but getting in there is kind of difficult, Ooh. isn't it? Story number three. <laughs> so essentially, they have this dinner, um, like around worlds usually. Uh huh. Uh, and so we had been talking for a while already. At, at least me and Kai, like we we had some discussions where we didn't necessarily agree, and that was all cool. And so we argued sometimes. Uh, always friendly, as far as I'm aware. And so after Worlds 2018, so I guess that was January 2019. Um, I was part of that world's dinner because it wasn't it was being hosted I think by can you say G but maybe I'm wrong there and that was just the best vibe I had ever had post event like of course hanging out with your friends at an event it's always cool you go to McDonald's or something it's cool but like that that vibe at that restaurant like it wasn't even about them being amazing players it was literally just so much fun and I'm not even much of an extrovert. Like on videos, I might be hype and stuff, but as myself, I'm usually just pretty silent and just doing my thing. But seriously, that was so much fun. I, I always hated loud places. I always hated parties. And that was the first time where I actually had like a little bit of a party vibe. So that was so good. And then from there, like some of these friendships just grew and grew. And after a while, I, I joined, I guess. I'm not sure how. I think it was after after I topped with Luard. I think that's when, when they deemed me good enough or something. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know, but like the, the friendships had like started growing from that January. And then it was, I think by July-ish or something after that event, when the first actual talks about that subject came up. Oh yeah, and uh, Chris uh, confirmed it. It is Seiji, he did. He did indeed, oh, okay, uh, okay, okay, yeah, so he yeah. did not get that wrong. All right, so then <clears throat> deeming being deemed good enough, what in your eyes do you think is the criteria of being deemed good enough in a respective card game? So, I mean, that depends on what your goal is, though. Because, like, when I say deemed good enough, what I mean is their standard for the team. No, but I mean, but, like, what is your standard for what you Well, well it's my standard. Mm -hmm. That's really hard. Like for me personally, I never feel like I'm good enough for, for what I want. But you also need to be rational in the sense that you can't win every game and every event because that's just not realistic. Variance exists. I don't really know. Like I think it depends on how loud you want to be. <laughs> like if you want to to scream at people and be very opinionated and say no it's like this and this is better than this and this is better than that then you better have like some actual results to back that up already um now that doesn't mean you can't like have an opinion when you don't obviously like everyone has has some thoughts and testing and insights and so forth but in general 
I think being good enough to get very, very loud and adamant about stuff, and, and I think you should at least have some results. Some people will maybe not like to hear that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I technically broke that rule because even before like I had any results, like actual like major event tops, I was already loud. So like I'm a hypocrite, and I'll accept that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I but I don't think you need to have like tops per se to be good enough. Like if you're if you just want to go to locals and not even go to a regionals, maybe it's too fucking far. Oh, can I swear by the way? I don't you're you're fine on swearing. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like way too far out, then it's not really within your control, you know. So I don't know. It it's really tough for me personally. In my ideal world, I top all the time. <laughs> it's not realistic, and I'll just have to deal with that. Okay. So you were talking a little bit earlier about about events and stuff that being being able to play it and stuff. Of course, mm -hmm. not currently in the global condition. BCSs are a little bit of figment of our imaginations at the moment. Um, what has been some of the favorite events or some of the favorite games that you've had when playing at events? Could you remember some? Hmm. Hmm, that's really tough. I've played so many cool games. Um, I don't know if you saw my game against Chris. It was premium um, with the new premium collection 2020. Um, uh, like, was it like Dimensional Robos versus um, Night Rose? Uh, yeah, Grand Blue versus, uh -huh. versus DP. And at one point, like I'm looking at my hand. I have six PGs or five PGs, something crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'm very close to deck out, but still, I'm like, he's never gonna break through this hand. He mm -hmm. can have three DP turns. This is fine. I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um, and and so, but I noticed, damn, I'm actually decking out. <laughs> like, I can be acting tough about my hand, but like, I'm on a clock here. And so, on his last attack, I throw away my entire hand, because mm -hmm. I'm just for no reason, because I'm like, I need to win next turn or I'm decking out. So, I throw away my hand so my skull dragons get extra big. Um, I go into Megiddo and I think, well, no one's ever going to live through a Megiddo. This is it. And actually, it was like 10k short of me losing and decking out. So that was such a mind-blowing game where like that DP stride adds so much shield to a hand. And that was crazy. I mean, th um, 30k shield is nothing to sneeze at, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like you're used... If, if you've done a full power Megiddo turn with Skull Dragons of like 90k six attack no uh, five attacks like that and no no one lives through that let's go and then no man that, that was a that was a nail biter but i i've had a lot of really cool games i think i've played a game against Norman where he healed at six three times in a row that was also very funny that I, oh oh in california that actually happened so i was playing um premium bcs california i played ezel and I was playing, I think the game that decided whether or not I could end up advancing to top 8. And it was Ezel, mirror match. So I had been doing like the biggest brain ultima denial and stuff like that. And then I couldn't get an ultima stride fodder to save my life. <laughs> and so I had to play a regular game. And Oof. so I, I set up this weird Gurgit turn, I swing. And he heals at six, and I'm like, God, no, please. And I live through another big turn of this, and I set up another weird turn, like completely out of comfort zone in the sense that I couldn't reach Ultima, I couldn't reach Glorious Rating, like none of the legit turns were in my reach. So I had to do all this weird stuff. And so I think, damn, okay, this six damage heal, fine, we'll play through that anyway. It's my turn again. We're in time, which is the big deal. Like I think 10 seconds left in time, there's a bunch of people standing around us, and I'm, I'm doing all this stuff that I've never done before, and i swinging, and he takes, oh, I can't guard, he takes the damage, it's another 6 damage heal, I'm like, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that game, holy hell. Uh, <laughs> that was the, the sackiest, like, event play I've ever had. And the guy was really nice, he was, um, I think he was a programmer for uh, Ripple. I don't know if you know Ripple, but Ripple is like this company uh, this financial company technology company that has this cryptocurrency called xrp and so i have a small position in that oh, and right. like had have been for i think two years or something and so we had been talking about that 
because he had this this blazer on with ripple on it and i was like oh cool you also invest in ripple and he's like no no i make it i'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was like it was all friendly it was all good but man those two six damage heals were oh, uh, way too much. true but i yeah, mean at least fun. you yeah, you you came in as Karen asking for the manager. You met the manager, so that's actually. Pretty... <laughs> I don't think he was the manager, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but like a lot of the, a lot of the 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 good memories that you have a lot right now, it seems to be premium based, and of course, you were one of the 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 um the knights that crusaded against the <laughs> <laughs> crusaded against the 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 evil that is called Zazan, um, like. Were you were you expecting for that to take off? Were you expecting for that to 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 turn make a turn in that direction? Do you mean it getting hit or it getting traction? Getting traction like that. Um. So obviously, before making a video like that, mm -hmm. <laughs> like where you go, like this needs to happen right now. <laughs> yes. You need like some actual testing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, prior to that video, we had hundreds upon hundreds of game with games within WC, uh, other teams as well so it's not like an echo chamber like strictly broken was also on it plenty of great players was on it and so it wasn't out of like out of nowhere there were loads of good players who were all just like this needs to stop this is insane um i'm sure some people disagreed and that's all fine but the, the large majority saw the issue and the way i saw it once events would come with Zazan, every single player would play a vanilla deck. There was no doubt in my mind whatsoever. It was so, so overbearing. Like I don't know if I don't know if you saw the stats, but essentially the win rate of a Zazan deck versus a non-Zazan deck was 97%. So there was no you, you had to play it, and so it felt awful. And I saw all these people who were well whining about it. I was whining about it because it would literally ruin the format. Like this format that I had been loving for so long because you have access to all these cards and so forth. And we, I'm sure we could talk about that for hours, but um, <laughs> I saw that going to shit. Like, and I, I'm, I'm always very real on my videos. Like you'll never see me try to coddle. I literally said like, premium sucks now. <laughs> this is the first time that it actually sucks and I don't want to play it. And I, that felt awful to say, but I want to be honest all the time. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I made the video, but I was fully aware that it would get some level of traction because we had so many people already facing the problem. And so when I asked people to tweet Suzanne to zero only if they actually had a problem with it, um, you saw loads of people who had been like, yeah, I've been trying it at local. It's awful, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of expected it because of a bunch of people already telling me about it, but I didn't expect it to get so big. And I also didn't necessarily expect that Bushiroad would like, hit it within a couple of weeks so true because they have actually been some content creators even outside of vanguard themselves talking about zazan as well so it was very oh. it was very interesting it was actually some card game reviewers and stuff like mm -hmm. you know talking about the different dynamics you know um card mixing or clan mixing and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. within different card games of color mixing like magic and Yu Gi Oh oh okay. of that like so they also compare to the toxic um, power scaling that a card game can sometimes induce. So mm -hmm. they talked about it at length. So it was very interesting. It was very interesting to look at. So then we talked a little bit about premium. Now for standard, like how mm -hmm. in, in comparison to premium, like we've been, we know from most of your channel that you're you're avid lover of it. How does it compare mm -hmm. to standard? And are you playing that a bit more now with how the the format has been shaping? Or do you still consider premium to still be one of the best, if not the best in your opinion? So, right during Zazan Premium felt so awful that I like was, well, there's no point. Once it got hit, I do feel it's still just a more enjoyable format for me. Now, I will say, in Silver Dust Blaze, that format, Silver Dust specifically, I enjoyed Suzano a lot. Mm -hmm. So, in Standard. Mm -hmm. um, that deck had, like, some could argue, like, oh, you can randomly kill people as if you're geese because you can like you can do Susano plus Amaterasu stuff and you can get to five damage and you just go like well <laughs> either you PG here or it's over you're gonna take five um, so that was fun but that was not the reason that it was fun the reason that it was fun was you had a lot of little moving elements and you had to like 
set up. For example, you had this, I think it's Amaterasu herself that uh, checks top three. So you have to consider, I can use her now to maybe stack my drive checks better, but I can also attack with her after Vanguard and stack my deck to try and get a defensive trigger the following turn. Um, but you also have this other chick that checks top three, and so you could use her to stack your drive checks, but then be one deeper. Um, and then that one deeper is, let's say, your trigger check next turn. And so there was a lot of little decisions you could make that totally changed depending on matchup and depending on other other things going on that made the deck very interesting to me. So like, and I've also been very vocal about that. Like I posted me playing against uh, Nuno. I don't know if you know him, but he's the standard world champion. Um, posting like that, I was playing with him and saying, oh, I'm now better than... That's not really true. <laughs> so, uh, fun stuff like that. So like, I will be vocal when I enjoy it. And, and Susano in Sil Silver Dust Place was actually fun. Um, but usually I will I will prefer premium. Once we hit the uh, Butterfly, the Moonlight, or even the Luart set, I, I enjoy premium uh, way more again. Because I feel like the Butterfly... Uh, meta is even more going first reliant than we've seen before. Whereas in Silverdust, um, even if you go second, like Susano could damage the Nye Overlord and and get their their uh, tempo back because again you can geese people. So like you can keep people at zero and then still come back from that and, and hoard your PGs. And so that that format felt felt cool for that reason. You had a lot of back and forth. Um, but then this one, Butterfly Standard, is is way more go first, uh, Unga Boonga with Sharot or Unga Boonga with Nitros. And so that's a bit less enjoyable, even though I love Nitros. Like, you know, I'm a big Grand Blue simp, but um, still, it, it feels to, to go first and win again. Um, apparently, Luart Mirrors are skillful, but I haven't tried them, so I'm not sure about it. Uh, from my testing with it, I, I guess, sorry, this is not a question part, but from my testing with it, uh, they are pretty skill intensive. It's also very dependent on which version of the Luard list you're playing with the bat mm -hmm. or not bat. If you're going painter bat combo, that's also pretty nice as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you go for the superior right chain of using Bende, which might have been a true issue here, but... <laughs> 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 Bende, Bende uh, it, it, turns, it turns pretty skillful. It's pretty nice. It's actually pretty nice. Um, so then, like, now let's talk about some of your other content that you've been making recently mm -hmm. that you've been taking a bit of a break on the whole Vanguard front. You've been making a little bit less content for that because you've mm -hmm. been focusing more on your musical career and you've been focusing a little bit more on your other YouTube channel. Would you care to mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about that one? So, Vanguard content slowing down was mostly, I never want to make a Vanguard video, like, forcing myself to because it, it really takes the enjoyment out of the game for me. And so again, on the channel, I'll never lie. I'll never be like, hey, what's up guys? I'm super excited and blah, blah, blah. It, it just, I can't. I'll be excited when I'm excited. I'll not make a video when I don't care. And so lately, it's just been a bit of a burnout feeling, let's say. And so I then just make less content. But when I see a really cool card and I want to react to it, I'll do it. Um, if there's something I want to talk about, like the state of Vanguard, I really want to do that. And and I, I think you can see in videos when I'm when I'm like really passionate that I'll go all in like in the state of Vanguard video for example, and yeah so I've I've it's it's been a bit less I think the not having events like plays a big part in that I'm sure for many people, and so as well as focusing more on on my actual company yeah that has been a very big deal and so I made the Yu-Gi-Oh channel then, but not actually about playing the game, <laughs> because. Every single time I play Yu-Gi-Oh, like, <laughs> this is an ongoing joke between Noman and I, Noman also part of WCC, where I'll tell him, like, hey, want to test Yu-Gi-Oh? And, and he says, like, yeah, yeah, three games. And then after three games, we're both like, wow, this sucks. <laughs> so, but, I mean, I love Yu-Gi-Oh as long as we're not trying to play, like, solve the meta. Because very often, when you're not min-maxing the slightest timing of a hand trap, everything else feels very dice roll. And so pro players will probably con consistently top. But when you're not pro, mm -hmm. like when you're in that top 30 percentile, instead of that top 5 percentile, everything feels very random. Uh, so more um, intermediate than advanced. Yeah, yeah I'm, abs I'm I'm not a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player <laughs> whatsoever. Not even close. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the most enjoyable. So Yu-Gi-Oh for me, I think 
either you're in the bottom percentage and then I'm having fun. So I'm like, I'm playing my blue eyes, I'm playing my cyber dragon, but I know fully well that they suck ass. <laughs> That's fun. Um, and then above that is like, oh, I'm trying hard with Eldritch, but because I'm not a pro, everything feels random, but it isn't. I know at the top percentile these pro players, but like I can't be arsed to put in the hours to get there because I already tried to put in the hours for Vanguard and put in the hours for the company and put in all those hours, so I can't. And so for that reason, for me, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! is it's whatever. However, the investing side, which is what the channel is actually about, that's fascinating to me. Um, if you've noticed the, the actual appreciation and value of these cards the past years, absolutely nuts. Like 2017, I, I sometimes check these videos of people's collections, but from the past. And so in 2017, someone could go like, oh yeah, this blue eyes, I got it for 500. Uh, really excited about it. And right now it's 20,000. And I'm like, oh, how I wish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so stuff like that, um, I find that fascinating. Now, obviously, there's also a lot of, I'd say, crooks in that in that scene in the sense that people are saying like oh buy this it's gonna go up it's gonna go to the moon blah 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 you'll be so rich when they're actually the ones selling it and so there's a lot of bs in that field yep. some people are putting all their life savings into it and thinking they'll be they'll be millionaires or something and selling so it's a... essentially mm -hmm. yeah selling a dream yep. and so that's what the channel is basically about just showing like hey i think these cards are interesting because of this and this however watch out on this um and that i find very fascinating but yeah okay so you talked a little bit about owning a company how did that come about what what made you inspire yourself to want to say you know what i want to own something <laughs> i want to well, it, it really wasn't that clear cut like i feel like in life you can never just say you know what tomorrow <laughs> i'm gonna become a producer boom and tomorrow like like it was more so i so i was making music already mm -hmm. and i noticed hey all these rappers are destroying metal and rock bands. Like metal and rock is not even a genre anymore. Like who the fuck listens to them? And I noticed how is that? And, and the big thing I noticed is that they are able to make their music like this, like not the rapping part. You still need years of experience and the skill and so forth, but the beats, the, 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 the kind of tracks that make some SoundCloud rappers blow up, they can make songs like every week because these beats are all on the computer and metal didn't have that for metal you literally had to go to your studio uh in in some big old expensive city and pay the guy thousands upon thousands upon thousands to record your guitar and your bass and your drums and that took so much money and so many months to get a finished product that a metal band usually releases a record like once every two years Meanwhile, these rappers are like, here's a song and here's a song and here's a song and here's a song. And so that volume, which is super important in like getting big on the internet these days, like just like YouTube, you need to have videos all the time. These rappers and EDM producers as well and pop producers as well, they can make their music far more efficiently than metal and rock bands. And so I feel like that's a really big reason that they're taking over culture. People don't have patience to wait two years for an album anymore. And so I figured, damn, me as a metal musician, I can go nowhere when I take so long making these songs. So I figured, why don't I make metal versions of the type of plugins these rappers and so forth are using? So I started recording um, samples, essentially, of every single sound instruments can make and then created plugins out of that. So right now, if I put out a metal song and it sounds like I played guitar and I played bass and I played drums, like, nah. <laughs> like, I, I, I literally, I can, I can do boop, 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 and my song is done now, which is the same level as a rapper or, or an EDM producer or a pop producer. And that makes me so much faster. And so that I, I really wanted to get to a point where metal musicians can literally create as fast as the pop industry to get some of that culture back, let's say. So that that's how it started, just for me. I wanted that plugin, and then I figured, well, maybe other people want it, and so it started growing from there. Oh, okay, so it's not an not an overnight thing, a future. Definitely not. De definitely not. All right. So then, what about the future for Solemn? What 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 do you see for yourself 
in your future? What do you want to achieve? That's very tough. Um, first things first, I'm going to buy a property for Solemn Tones. So already went to the bank for, for loan stuff and all of that is taken care of. So Solemn Tones will have its own building. Um, and then I want to build a sort of card game room set, like pre-built with like everything fancy all the lighting is set up all the cameras are ready so that i can literally like press a button and start recording because that's also a pretty big deal when you're in one small space and you're using that small space for different things you're actually most of your time goes to setup which i'm sure you also know like a lot of your time goes into oh i'm gonna put this up and this up and that that just stops you whereas i literally want to have so solemn tones will be you'll have one room for a podcast you'll have one room to record music you'll have one room to make a vanguard video and so forth upstairs of course while yeah. the downstairs will be for employees potentially and stuff like that um so yeah that that is the big one i i want to increase the output that the company can make while simultaneously also increasing the output of what i can make um because obviously like if you if you're trying to manage so many things at once you want to make sure that you don't waste time on, on setting up a camera or setting up a light because that takes hours <laughs> out of out of your month and so forth so that's going to be a thing um i'm hoping i can make that Yu-Gi-Oh channel bigger i really want to like explain to more people how that works because i'm i'm very afraid a lot of people are going to be losing a lot of money like there's people saying oh you should go in you should go get a credit card to put your expenses on that because you know they'll double in value anyway and then you can sell and pay that off i'm like Ooh, no that oh, is no 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> that is not how that money works that is... <laughs> or, or like people going like yeah you should just buy all these modern cases and sit on them and you know have you seen lob lob is twenty thousand for a box now so your box will also be 20 i'm like no no that so, is not how that works <laughs> so I really want to get that big enough mm -hmm. so that I can warn people. But secondly, also because I just love talking about that stuff. Um, yeah, I also want to get my finances. Like my finances are good, but I want to get them even more in control. Right now, I, if you don't know, I own quite some higher end Yu-Gi-Oh cards mm -hmm. and they have exploded in price. And so usually I tell people, never put more than 20% of your money into cards. Because obviously, like, <laughs> you don't want your entire financial future to depend on cardboard. Mm -hmm. But because the, those exploded, now that whole balance is off. So I, I got I to gotta restructure that. That's interesting to me. Um, I want to release more music. I want to collaborate with very big um, artists within metal, which I think will work because Solemn Tones, like, reaches quite far. Like, there's... There's international touring bands, there's rock stars, there's people with two million subscribers like using the plugin secretly. <laughs> so I wanna I wanna be able to like get more in contact with those people, maybe make some cool music together. Uh, yeah, for, for Vanguard, it's literally I just wanna go to events again. Like like I can say like, oh I want more subscribers, but I actually don't care. I don't care <laughs> one bit. It's it's also why I'm very I'm not against being mean to people because i really don't care about how many subscribers a channel has even though i really appreciate everyone watching and obviously i care about that a lot i love meeting people at events and signing stuff and all of that is amazing but first and foremost i'm a player and so i want to go play so, so that's the big the big one there all right well solemn thank you for taking out your time thank you for thank telling you for us me. about all your prospective future plans that you have i mean you didn't have to but it's good to know <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know it's good to know what's going on because of course you asked <laughs> exactly <laughs> I, I did i did <laughs> but um like there, there's a lot of projects that sometimes people can be very finicky about and not want to discuss mm -hmm. or disclose of course like since you've been taking a small break and people were kind of wondering where you've been up to sort of thing have they damn <laughs> yeah, I mean, people people care about your content. People care what you're doing. So mm -hmm. it's good to hear good to hear a little bit more from from what's going on with you. So I'll be doing a quick little send off, and you'll be able to do the same as well. If you have any little extra plugs and stuff that you want to do, you can do it at the end. Okay. All right. So be awesome, stay awesome, guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to comment your favorite clan, comment your favorite card, and hopefully you might end up getting winning.
I'll end up being a winner in the end. <laughs> so be awesome, stay awesome, guys. It's your boy JJ and Solemn. You're all winners in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> and until next time. Crushing the meta! <laughs> <laughs>